Andy Height is a recognized leadership coach who supports entrepreneurs, executives, and their teams as they navigate the world of building lives and businesses filled with prosperity, meaning, and freedom. That all sounds wonderful, and you are going to want to stick around today for today's episode when we meet Andy Height. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. I had the delight of speaking with Andy Height. Oh, I made a rhyme, and I didn't even try that, but (laughs) uh, we were talking backstage, and um, we have so much in common, and I can't wait to get on with this conversation. But Andy, first and foremost, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm excited to, uh, to jam with you today. Me too. I, you know... Whenever I have a guest on the show, of course, I gather some information and I was perusing your website, which by the way, folks, um, at the end of the episode, we're going to tell you how to link up with Andy and also share his site in the show notes. But one thing that I really, really admired and loved that just stuck out to me is the values that drive you. And some of them were family is everything, make a difference. All you need is love belly laughs required, which I love that. And growing is living. I love those values. And how did you come to those? And how did you come to this place in your life where you're coaching in this way with these values? Yeah. So, you know, they've been in evolution, right? And I really believe that, that if we're doing this thing called life right, we we need a compass, right? We need something that is going to keep us moving in a direction that we are aligned with our highest self. Um, and one of the ways that I do that for myself and with clients and teams is like, well, what are your values? How are you desiring to show up in the world? And what are those things that you're kind of comparing your experience of life and work to who and how you value yourself and life, right? So one of the things I know, if I'm not laughing, something's off. So I have those values, you know, I see them a lot. Um, I revisit them a lot. And I know like, if if something isn't clicking, if I'm not feeling great, if the business isn't running well, I go back and I say, where am I misaligned? Um, and it really is a compass. Yeah, yeah. And I... One of the things that you said is, you know, aligning with your highest self and, and yeah. all of these facets. So, you know, for a lot of people that I talk with, I, I feel like they're missing that piece. They yeah. kind of get in the rat race, which is why this podcast exists. And they're in this hypnotic rhythm yep. of accepting life the way it is. And they're not, they're not aligned with their highest purpose. So I'm curious because we all have our stories and how we align and why we're helping people in the way we do. And I, I'd love to know more about yours. Yeah. So my story is, um, I'll give you the the quick low down and dirty of how I kind of ended up here. Um, when I was 23, I moved to Chicago right after college and I found myself a depressed kid. <laughs> I, I found myself one evening Friday night when everybody's going out and I had no friends and didn't know anybody um, in tears on my apartment floor. Um, I I thought there's got to be a better way. And I looked over and there was this book that was gifted to me years before that was gathering dust called um, The Road Less Traveled by M. Scott Peck. Have you read that book? Uh, Yeah. Long time ago. I remember. It's been a while, right? I I couldn't even tell you what's in it. Um, But that book ignited, um, just a fire within me because it it showed me that there's a different way, right? That I don't have to be kind of, as you were saying, asleep in life, that I can kind of have some agency over what I create and who I am. That hunger continued my entire life. And so personal and professional development has been a passion of mine. And that's what kind of got me into coaching right? As the work I do on myself that I do with my friends and family, I learned about this world of coaching and thought, 
I I could really do uh, well in this, and it feels like a calling in life. So we kind of left the previous career, gave up the paycheck, the benefits, started this practice, and and we're here hoping to impact lives and businesses and 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 people so that they can experience what my bio said, you know, meaning yeah. prosperity. Yeah, and I'm curious because a lot of listeners. Um, you know, some are in roles that they're not really thrilled about. Some would like to make their current situation that they do enjoy better, yeah. you know, and a lot more aligned with their values. Um, and then there are some people who are really looking to make that transition or in the midst of it. So what was your transition like uh, when you were in your previous job or role into yeah. finally stepping into something that you're passionate about. Totally. Like I loved my previous career. So like you, I have a, a background in the arts. I grew up a singer um, and then I started producing theater. I did that commercially for 15, 18 years. Wow. I loved it. But this, this world of coaching, as I started dabbling in it and I'd learn more and I'd help people, it's, it really started to pull me like Oh, if I want to make a difference in the world, you know, and this was in my early 40s, this might be the thing that I create for my legacy. And um, I was working with a client, one of my first paying clients. And at the end of that uh, piece of work, he's like, hey, I just want you to know that meeting you and doing this work changed my life. And I thought, wow, like I didn't know that it could be that powerful. Yeah. And um, I went home that night and I said to my wife, Sasha, I'm like, this might be what I need to do. And that kind of planted the seed. Um, and about six months later, I said, hey, we're going to make a change. Are you on board with me? I have no idea how it's going to go. I have no idea how it's going to go. Yeah. But I feel like I need to take the leap. Um, and so I called up uh, my company and said, hey, I'm leaving. I'm starting a business. I'm going to and my boss at the time, he goes, you're going to be a life coach? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to help people. I want to do something that I find meaningful and I want to make a difference in the world. Um, and I tell you, my daughter last night said, hey, dad, so how's the business going? I'm like, it's good. And she goes, if you had to do it over again, would you do it? And I said, absolutely. I would never look back. Um, it's just the coolest work that I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, I agree. And uh, your story is so similar to mine in that it sounds like, you know, you had this fire ignited in you from starting from a book and yeah. that you had this hunger, as you say, to learn more and to immerse yourself and continue to grow and follow your curiosity. Um, and similarly to you, once I landed on, oh my gosh, this is this is the way, this is the path. Yeah. Um, within three months of deciding this is the path, I submitted my retirement. Basically, I sent the sent Amazing. the mail, like you know, I hit send, yeah. um, just like you. And within six months, I was completely um, separated from the military. I'd been in for twenty seven years. Uh, so, uh, you know, I love. What was hearing- that like for you? Oh because my gosh. I know it was like for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, it, it was freaking scary. It it was scary, but you know, and this this is why I love this conversation because I can't stress enough the importance of listening to that little voice yes. in your head that tells you to do something and you might think it's frivolous or it doesn't make sense or it's not in alignment with the trajectory you've kind of analyzed for yourself, yeah. right? Or what makes sense or what you think you should do. But t- so for many years, I kept having the push and nudge inside of myself to get yoga teacher certified. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to do it. It's too expensive. I have tuition assistance in the military. It doesn't pay for that. And it's like, after three years, I'm like, Lord, this is so stupid. You want to yeah. go do it. Just do it because you want to do it. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. have to have a purpose, but that's what led me to meeting my mentor and opened me up to, oh my gosh, I could do this with people's minds. And yeah. that's, following my curiosity is what opened me up the unconscious priming of a goal and a vision. That's what opened me up 
to the solutions all around me. Totally. But, you know, it was it was scary. It was exciting and scary at yeah. the same time. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I hit send and I was like, Whoa! and I'm like, I told my husband afterwards, uh, what do you think of me retiring? I, I submitted <laughs> you said my, it afterwards. Yeah, I said it afterwards. I can't believe it. I just <laughs> did it. And <laughs> And, uh, well, I hope it worked out. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. But it's funny because after I did it and I had my ceremony, he's like, I want to retire now too. And he's doing something else yeah. now uh, as you well. Know, you said something that I, that I love when my clients say, which yeah. is, this is both scary and exciting yeah. because like something that's so uh, important to me is the world of possibility, not predictability. You know, most of us go through life achieving living what is predictable i am all about what's possible and yeah. what i know is possibility lives at the intersection of fear and excitement so yeah. i know when clients and myself right have both of those feelings we're on to something yes like, this is a direction that we need to listen to i always talk about too like do you ever play that game when you're a kid hot or colder Somebody would hide something and you'd go to look for it. And if you're going in the right direction, they say yeah. hotter yes. or if you're going in the wrong. I think that that is like the universe giving us uh, signs, right? If we feel that it, you're moving in the right direction, it yeah. might not be the perfect direction, but you're going right and you need to be going right, right? Yeah. Getting west. Mm, I love that. I love, you know, so what I'm hearing is a, a theme here of, listening to that inner voice and following yeah. the curiosity and not shying away from the fear just because you don't know how to do something. That was another thing you said. You had no idea how, nor did I, um, but I knew that it it was right. It felt right. And I trusted you've got to have f faith in something. It's either faith or fear, but yeah. you also have to embrace that fear because that yeah. is a telltale sign you're growing. Well, and this is something that I know both you and I know, and we work with every day, right? Um, we we don't succeed or get new things from what we know how to do. We already know how to do it. And so the only way for us to grow and achieve new things and to create higher and higher level of successes, whatever that means, is to step out of our comfort zone. And that requires a little bit of facing our fears, right? Because our, our our survival mechanisms, they're designed to keep us in our comfort zone. But yeah. the world of possibility is what lives outside of it. And so we want to embrace those things that bring us a little bit of pause. We want to go out into the world and discover how to do things when we, when we don't know. You know, earlier you mm -hmm. said um, what was important to you was curiosity. A lot of people ask me what makes, in my opinion, and with my clients, uh, successful entrepreneurs. And one of the the qualities that I think is just curiosity. They yeah. don't know, but they're willing to ask. They're willing to explore. They're willing to be right and wrong at the same time, right? It's, it's not about knowing. It's being curious. And that's how we find new things that can help us along our journey. 100%. So I'm hearing that following your intuition, curiosity, embracing fear. That's where the growth happens. And pause is another thing that you said, because we, when we're in this hypnotic rhythm of life and in the rat race, yeah. we're not thinking. Mental activity does not constitute thinking. We're being, you know, pushed around by circumstances and external pulls and demands on our time and on our focus and attention that rarely do we sit down and think about our thinking, our thoughts yeah. that we're having. And so those thoughts, when when we do feel fear, our knee-jerk, non-thinking reaction is to go back to safety and be comfortable, yeah. right? Because yeah. even if we're not happy where we are, it is our comfort zone because it's what we know, is what our brain knows. Oftentimes we will choose without some higher level of consciousness, the devil we know. Versus the devil we don't, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because we are trained. We we want certainty. We want safety. Um, but really everything that we, I think uh, there's a quote, I'll, I botch quotes all the time, but, you know, everything you ever want is just outside uh, on the other side of fear. Yeah. Right. And you, and, and you mentioned too, like life pushing and pulling and not having enough time. 
oftentimes those are a function just of our beliefs, our belief systems, right? Mm -hmm. That often drive us unconsciously. Yeah. I Did you ever see the movie um, Inside Out, the Pixar movie? I haven't seen that one. Actually. Oh, you should watch it. Okay. It'll, like you'll love to use it in your work. Yeah. It's basically this, this movie uh, on the inside of a little girl's brain and how she is somewhat driven by little characters. One is blue, which is sorrow. One is green, which is jealousy. One is red, which is fire. And oftentimes we are driven by the thoughts and beliefs that we've grown up with, right? This is what we refer to as blind spots. Mm -hmm. If we haven't done the work to understand what's driving us, then we can't actually consciously change our, our behaviors and circumstances. So in addition to life circumstances on the outside, a lot of it is just our own internal beliefs I, uh, thinking perspectives, values that might be uh, misaligned. Yeah. And I, that <laughs> I was um, hosting a book club and uh, we were talking about, you know, what to toss, keep to change yeah. in our lives. Right. And somebody had asked me, you know, how do you decide what? And I'm like, I'm not asking you to decide, like, you're not taking action right now. You're just putting on paper. Paper things that you are doing that you love doing that you don't love doing that you really wish you didn't have to do anymore or felt like you had to do. And even, even at that, like our con subconscious mind will try to hold on and fight, <laughs> even allowing ourselves, giving ourselves permission to look, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm just writing these things on a piece of paper. That's it. So I can see them in front of me and then examine. Yeah. I, I love exercises like that, right? Because it, it creates awareness and with the awareness is like the greatest gift we can ever get. Cause then we have choice. Then right. we can choose to make a change. We don't have to, it's not required, but the higher our level of awareness, then we can make a lot of shifts that can really change the quality of our life, our teams, our work, our leadership yeah. um, drastically. Absolutely. So in, in your kind of realm in, in helping people mm -hmm. discover this, what are some steps that people can tangibly take to kind of discover their alignment and, uh, you know, is what they're doing currently in alignment or can they do what they're currently doing and bring it into alignment? How, how do you help people find that? Great question. You know, the first thing I ask people is like, just get quiet and listen and feel. Does everything feel good? Do you have any like discomforts in your body, right? The, it'll tell you that things aren't kind of clicking in a way. And then we just get curious. Oftentimes in my work, we're, we're very project-based. Everybody wants something, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of just the framework of what we do is like, where are you? I don't like the way my business, is, the trajectory of my business. I don't like how my teams are going. I don't like my own leadership. I'm, I'm just not happy, whatever that is. And then we discover, well, where do you want to be? We get very clear on that. Um, I don't, I, I'm curious, like in your work, do you, yep. do you see with leaders and entrepreneurs and those that you work with that they have a hard time with that vision piece? Because that's one of the things that my clients have a very hard time. Yeah. Um, some some do and some don't. Um, some have some have clarity and they can they can visualize and imagine. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I'll start with all right, like if I'm talking about their time and their management, yeah. and they wish they had more time and you know, the whole gamut. I ask them to look at their current calendar. Yeah. And look at what it's displaying for them because that's their current reality. That's their yeah. relationship with time and the things, even if they say something's important, what's actually important, what's on the, the calendar. And then I ask them to um, discuss what they don't like about their current situation. And then mm -hmm. we can start from there as, okay, what's the opposite of that? What would yeah. that look like? Yeah. So uh, I love that. Um, to go back to kind of our structure, Mm -hmm. um, once we have that clear vision, we create a path. And so oftentimes when we get into the gym of life, that's when our, the obstacles come up. That's when our, 
um, the friction happens. And that's really where we coach. We want a little bit of friction. We want the obstacles to come up because that's where we start to learn that our, our thinking, our beliefs, our perspectives might be limiting because those are the things that are going to keep us safe. And so a lot of what we do is we put ourselves out into a, a bold vision of life and work and team. And then as we move about those milestones, we work with whatever comes up and that's where growth happens, right? Yeah. Um, if a founder or a, a CEO is is wanting their teams to be more aligned, but they're too controlling, that's going to come out when we have goals to have that team become more aligned because that, that founder is going to want to control. And then we can work with those beliefs and the fears that are behind it yeah. That's where the growth and transformation comes. Yeah, I love that you have, we have to have goals. I mean, we have to, even if yeah. it's, right? And so even in a coaching session that I'm with somebody, we I have them set a goal for the coaching. So what yeah. do you want to get accomplished during this You know, 45 minutes or an hour or whatever the case may be? Because- when we put ourselves on the line and we set a goal that we're creating a vision for what we want and it's different than something that we already have. And so when we start moving, that voice of dissent <laughs> will emerge. And yeah. that's when you can deal with the old beliefs, as you're saying. Yeah, that's the work. And then when yeah. we can bankrupt those those beliefs and thoughts and perspectives that aren't supporting us, then we start to like release some of the chains that bind us. Yeah. 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 I I also love the idea that, you know, I like that you just said we bankrupt those old beliefs. Yeah. Because through attrition, right, we're they they kind of dissipate, right? Yeah. And then then we get to choose what would I rather believe? Yes. Who, who would I rather be? Cuz we have yeah. to replace those beliefs with something, right? Yep. Yeah, we're always going to have a perspective on, you know, trees. You know, yep. if they made our lawn dirty, we're going to not like them. But if they bring us beauty and so we want to shift that belief to something that is going to like support us and help us in our endeavors. That's the piece that I think a lot of people miss when they're trying to change habits or reach a goal and they have a habit or a thought pattern that's not healthy, not productive. They want to eliminate it, but they don't choose something to replace it with mm -hmm. so they're not really generating a new belief and then yeah, they fall back we we kind of refer to that as sort of bypassing you just try mm. and cut something off yeah well, that doesn't really work right because <laughs> we're all we're gonna have to relate with whatever that thing is so we have to create the way in which we want to relate to it we yeah. can't just pretend that it's not there or it doesn't exist or we don't think that anymore um so 100 agree Oh my gosh. So you also work with individuals and teams. Mm -hmm. So how do you address um, a kind of, because we all have our individual beliefs and individuals yeah. make up a team. So when you yeah. have a team made up of individuals and there's a collective consciousness or culture that needs to shift, what's the process for that? Oh, such a good question. And it's a complicated, yeah. complex thing, right? Yeah. Um, a couple of things. I mean, first we we look at who the the founder, the CEO, and the leadership team, who they're being, what they believe, what their values are. Mm -hmm. Um usually they kind of have five words written on the wall, but they don't embody it. And so a lot of times we try and get super clear on that. Um, and then kind of finding out why do you do what you do? Why do people show up every day and log on to their computers um, aside from earning a paycheck? And again, oftentimes that's missing. Yeah. So we try and first help the founder, the, the CEO, the leadership team get super clear because then when they're super clear, they can help take that down into the ranks. And they yeah. actually do that same coaching with their teams, their direct reports. Why are you here? What do you want? How can I support you? So yeah. we get people bought into something more than a paycheck or more than um, just punching a clock. Yeah, it sounds like just very similarly to that on an individual level. Yeah. it Your curiosity, you know, you're asking the questions, asking and, people to tap in. 
you started it when, when we first signed on, like with the values, Mm -hmm. if we're not guided, we have, we're guided by something, right? Yeah. And if we're not conscious and intentional about what we're guided by, well, we're probably just going to get whatever shows up. And just like with you and I, if we're guided by intention and values, same thing with a corporation, right? If they are guided by why do we show up and do what we do and what do we believe collectively and then have that filter through the entire organization, that's when really good companies um, click. Yeah, yeah. That takes, as you know, that's not easy. That takes work. That takes intention. It it does. And I it drives me nuts when I hear people refer to this work as like soft skills because it's <laughs> nothing. There's nothing soft about it. It's it implies hard. easy. It's not easy, right? It's not. It, I always talk about getting into the gym of life, right? If yeah. I'm I'm a little soft if I'm if I'm honest. But if I want, you know, a a like a really fit rocking hard body, it's going to require me to get into the gym and lift those weights and put in the reps. Um and that is true of 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 leaders and teams and yeah. and full businesses. All of it's possible, but it is somewhat elective. We don't have to do it. But right. by not making a choice, we are making a choice. Yeah. And 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 if we avoid, you know, figuring out what our values are, like what once you see it, you can't unsee it. Oh, you can't so unsee like, it. Right. And so don't yeah. think of a blue elephant. Everybody's right. exactly. thinking of a blue <laughs> elephant. Yeah. So it's like once you get locked in on your values and an idea or a notion of what you want, even if it's just a vague feeling. I just want to feel more at ease. Okay, that's a great starting point. But then you have a choice. What am I willing to do? You know, am I willing and am I able to do what it takes to create that? And yeah, you know, and if we believe what we've been taught in, you know, science, theology, what then yes, we we can. We we have the ability to do yeah. what it takes. Um I believe so that we are choice. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Oh yeah, Dan. I believe that we're incredibly malleable. Yeah. Right. Um, And we can do the work to reframe our beliefs and show up in the world in very different ways than what we're experiencing now, which will get us very different results than the ones we're getting now. Yeah. If we kind of sign up and sign that contract to ourselves that, Hey, I really want this new vision and I'm willing to put in the time, the effort, and the investment to get there. And that that really boils down to self-love. A hundred percent. Yeah. How much do I believe in myself? How much do I love myself? How much do I want to take care of myself, my my mind, body, spirit? Yeah. Yeah. And And when we do that, life, no matter where we are and what we're doing, even in the work that we're currently doing, if we're not thrilled with it, we can find alignment there. It, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to do something, you know, drastic. And I'm going to be an entrepreneur because some people are, you know, when I talk to them, they're like, well, you work with a lot of entrepreneurs. Do I? No, you don't have to do that. You can yeah. find joy and alignment right where you are. Um, but it, you've got to show up for yourself. You've got to just decide that you're worthy of it. Well, I love what you just said because it's already within us. Yeah. It's, we just don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's many layers to that statement. Yeah. Um, There's so many um, beliefs that cloud our ability to express love and joy in the moment. Right. We believe our circumstances should be different. We believe that COVID shouldn't have happened. We believe that. Um, life is too hard on us. Those are beliefs because yeah. your neighbor may not think the same thing. Therefore, it is elective. And those, I really do know that um, the happiness, the joy, it it's already here. We yeah. just have to kind of peel away the onion to express it. Yeah, beautifully said. I, I we could talk for hours, hours. on this subject. Hours, <laughs> but so much I, alignment. Oh, definitely, definitely, absolutely alignment. And 
I encourage our listeners, if you're ready to get into alignment, if you're feeling amiss, like there's something more to than what you're doing now, then I highly recommend that you get in contact with Andy. We'll have his website in the show notes. But um, Andy, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you'd like to leave with our audience? No, you you do a, an excellent job of of interviewing and creating a conversation. I think we covered a ton. Um, so I really appreciate the conversation. Oh, thank you so much for being here, for pouring into our audience. And um, for those of you listening, remember, we're here every week. And I always say the same thing, that everything is created twice, first in your mind and then in physical form. So I'm excited to see you again next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.